So this is what we did about three years ago and we we find it the last year and to this year I think we've got it pretty much uh, fairly fine-tuned on this particular farm, okay? And so the object of this uh, this particular talk is to is an attempt to again you can see the air blast compare the air blast sprayer here that most of you use uh, generally speaking uh, and you can see uh, the uh, uh, crowding there in, in the row there uh, knocking down a heck of a lot of berries down on the uh, uh, base of of, uh, of those plants and then coming through later with a machine harvester you even got more of your dollars sitting on the floor of the crop so uh, we like the uh, non-invasive system it's a set system you just uh, hit a button uh, it's like uh, watering your your uh, lawn and put it on a schedule if you need to and when and where and it's a very precise system and it puts the material just where you want it the, but the question is you know are, are we getting good coverage are we getting wash off or is, we're talking about 700 gallons per, uh, per uh, pulse uh, on the mitigation system versus your traditional 50 to maybe 80 gallons uh, per acre with your air blast uh, sprayer so there are three objectives here you can read them along with me Conduct bioassays. This is the work I've showed you in the past, using the, uh, the, the flies to tell us how toxic your coverage is, okay? So what we do is we collect leaves, put them in petri dishes, put our flies on them, and observe mortality after 24 hours, okay? It's just a biological way of having the fly tell us how toxic, how toxified is the environment uh, that you've pre presented them with, okay? And in our study, we decided to look at uh, the three big biggies that we're looking at, Malathion, Mustang, okay, OP, a, 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 a pyrethroid, and actually looking at Danitol. I think that's been a real nice material uh, that uh, we've kind of come upon uh, that we'd like to report on uh, for, for you today. So the trials went from zero to seven days and taking uh, leaves every other day Bring, uh, bringing them back to our lab in, in uh, Mount Vernon and uh, subjecting them to bioassays. The second part is to actually look at the chemical residues. It's fine, the biological for me, but we, we need some technology to look at the dislodgeable residues on those leaves, to look at the parts per million and correlate that with what the flies are telling us. So that gives us an insight about coverage uh, and the degradation of these residues on the leaf during that seven week, seven six to seven day spray interval that we've had to go to with the spotted and wing dysophila. And thirdly, uh, some of the work my colleague, uh, Dr. Vince Hebert, will talk about, I, I think after I, very, very important, uh, describing decline curves, MRLs, okay, for marketable berries during the harvest period for those three major, major players, as you all recognize, big time hitters for our spotted and wing dysophila integrated resistance management. We're on a calendar spray, folks, and unfortunately that's just the way it is with this direct pest that has invaded our, our cozy little Pacific Northwest, as many of you know, uh, about 2009. Uh, this is just showing you uh, how mo most of your uh, uh, blueberry uh, fields look as they mature, the canopy starts closing in. Those aisles are pretty damn tight. Uh, very difficult to get standard, even uh, smaller uh, size tractors and sprayers through that without really knocking a lot of money down on the orchard floor, okay? So that's a big no-no. Uh, also, uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, helicopter applications. Uh, generally speaking, we don't get the residual. I think they're great early. Uh, and, and they do, uh, the applications do hold, but I don't think we get the, you know, the concentration that, that we do with your air blast sprayer and possibly your uh, 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 mitigation system if, if some of you in the, in the future want to go that way. We are doing some work with alternate heads, trying to bring costs down. I won't report that today, but there's, uh, we, we're evaluating four different types of, uh, of uh, heads that uh, may uh, be of some interest to many of you that may want to retrofit uh, in a standalone system like uh, the system I'm uh, showing you here. Uh, the work was done in Salem, Oregon at the Pacific, uh, uh, the Pan American Blueberry Growers there in Salem. I, th I think many of you know uh, those folks. And uh, again, they're down, uh, down south where it gets pretty darn hot in August and September for their late season berries, okay? 
Again, misligation is a non-invasive method to deliver a fruit cooling initially. Now we've kind of adapted it so we can now inject uh, pesticides with neg negligible fruit knockdown in a timely and precise way. So you can really uh, uh, hit the button uh, based upon your chemistries, uh, based upon your picking schedule and the like. So you can, you know, uh, do that, uh, have the system come on early in the morning or late, depending upon wind and drift. And, and it gives you more flexibility uh, compared with our traditional uh, ground approach, okay? Uh, so Metafem nozzle is sh shown there on the left. You can all see it. Uh, it it's um, really, it puts out a fairly fine um, droplet size. I wouldn't say it's a mist. Uh, but you can see the, uh, we used a lot of, initially, a lot of uh, water sensitive tape, uh, papers at different levels in the canopy, up top, middle, all over to get an idea of uh, droplet uh, coverage, okay, at different timings. That's the biggest challenge is to calibrate this, <laughs> this system when you're talking about multiple acres, okay, 5, 10, 20 acres being chemigated, mistigated at one time to get the timing, the drying, without wash off. So that was kind of a, an area that we've worked on for the last early uh, two, uh, two years of this three year study. Uh, we also use sentinel traps on the right. These are essentially our canary cages whereby we put flies in them, uh, put them and hang them at different places in the canopy, uh, put on the uh, sprinkler system injected with Mustang or uh, Melifian, and uh, look at the mortality, the direct mortality coming through the tops of, of the uh, Open, uh, of the, uh, the uh, uh, arena or the canary cage, if you will. Uh, fairly small draw, uh, opening, uh, 0 0.061 inches diameter. We put, it's a low gallonage, uh, 15 so gallons per hour, at about 50, 35 to 50 PSI. And generally, uh, we about 182 of these per acre. Every other row staggered uh, uh, 12 and a half feet apart, okay, uh, for this particular unit. We're looking at other units whereby the diameters are, are, are larger, maybe the droplets are a little more coarse, but you would use fewer, fewer uh, uh, nozzles driving down the cost. And we're looking at, the system here is an underground system. We're looking at a system where it would be laid on top of the, uh, you know, the, the, through the center of, of the row and fairly um, uh, uh, similar to this, but not as uh, intensive in terms of, of uh, labor in, in installing the system. So hopefully we'll have some information and data to show you next year on that. This is kind of a, just an idea of what the controller there and some stats in terms of injection there in the pump house and um, me there at the lower left uh, using blue dye to kind of calibrate, looking at timing, how long does it take uh, 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 the, the dye to move through 500 foot rows, okay? And do we need to stagger or do we need to pulse them at different intervals? So those are the kind of uh, systems, uh, uh, data that is probably the most uh, time consuming. But once it's calibrated, it's, it's fairly, uh, fairly um, for this, uh, fairly accurate. Uh, last year we used uh, three 15 minute pulses. We injected for 15 minutes. Uh, we, we pushed the whole pesticide movement right through half of the 500 feet. We let it dry and we pushed another volume of just pure water to push the, the remaining uh, uh, pesticide down the, half, the remaining half of that row and then we, we dried it and that was pretty much uh, our cycle and we got pretty, uh, pretty even coverage from the front end to the, uh, the, the end of, the, of 500 rows uh, in this particular system with the particular hardware that I've listed uh, uh, here in, on the right. Obviously, different acreages would you'd have to work with your uh, irrigation supply folks and, and uh, tailor it to your particular needs and and the like. It could be a bigger pump, smaller pump, different injectors and what have you. But this is all physical stuff that's easily uh, measurable. You know, it's not like entomology kind of qualitative. This is pretty quantitative uh, uh, knowledge in terms of uh, hydrology and how water works. And many of you know about this better than I do, of course. Anyway, uh, this is our laboratory bioassay. We just uh, quickly collect leaves, uh, bring them into the lab. Uh, samples are taken before spray at zero, one, three, five, seven days after treatment. 
Um, you can see we uh, had 10 replicates and petri dishes, two leaves per, uh, per arena with a little diet. And we put uh, our flies, uh, about eight of flies uh, uh, per uh, arena there and, and measured their response to whatever residues were on those leaves. These residues were randomized. Some of them were, well, they were taken from the top and the bottom uh, in the middle section, then we mixed them all together. So in a real world, some of those leaves may have droplets on them and some don't. But we feel that overall, if we, these flies, uh, unlike a lot of other insects, are very active. So they're flitting around all over the place. So there's high probability in a day that they're going to land on droplets, okay, that are toxic. We don't want to, you know, the idea is, well, maybe we want an even toxification on all the surfaces of the leaf, but that's impossible. But if we've got enough droplets, these flies are going to be mating, they're going to be resting, they're going to be at different places. They're not a, a sessile insects, they're very vagile, fast movers, okay? So they're going to, five more minutes, okay, I'm getting there. So this is some of the data. We started in 28 July uh, this year. Our first uh, series, of uh, these were seven pretty much uh, calendar sprays, okay? We came out of the box with malathion 8 at a, a, a one and a quarter pounds or pints per acre. Uh, injected them through the system, okay, and uh, the red bars are, are the is the air blast, the air blast hot, okay. Rears uh, pull along red, and you can see uh, at zero, one, two, three, five. You can read it yourself. That th those bars are fairly high. Those are percent mortality of those flies that we put in those petri dishes, okay. You can see it just after we sprayed it. We went in, it took leaves, and we killed all of those flies and those petri dishes that I showed earlier, okay? One day later, with the air blast, you can see some little bit of degradation, but pretty much pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, the pretty stable uh, all the way across through, uh, through five days. And then about the six days, as we know, a lot of the OPs tend to drop very quickly. And you can see either, even with our air blast and our miss, we're down to only, you know, 10, 20 percent kill. But, but next day, uh, or next week, uh, the seventh day, we're going to come back with a, you know, again with a Mustang Max, and we're going to hit it again, as you can see uh, in the lower figure. You, the, I guess what I want to point out is the yellow bars, okay? You can see that we're not getting as much mortality on the leaves uh, compared with our air blast. No doubt the air blast is the ultimate way to go in terms of getting pretty good coverage on all surfaces of the leaves and some on the berries, okay? But the mitigation, uh, still uh, at that set, and actually for the whole season, uh, the pan uh, American berry growers never picked up flies in any of those uh, blocks that were mitigated. Even though in the first set you can see uh, pretty much a, a decline like you would expect, uh, uh, even though the, these are bioassays, not residues, uh, way uh, OPs, malathion works. Not a long residual, pretty uh, rapid decline. We followed up on the seventh day uh, with uh, uh, four fluid ounces of Mustang Max, and you can see um, a pretty good uh, uh, um, efficacy between our yellow, the mitigation versus uh, air blast for the first couple of days. But then, you, as again, it, it begins to drop down. But with mitigation, pretty uh, uh, you know holding its own. But again, uh, Mustang Max and like our pyrethroids. Uh, fairly, a pretty good uh, long residual on leaves uh, right through seven, eight days. Then we follow again uh, the following week with um, an, our malathion. You can see malathion through mitigation looks pretty darn good, actually. You can see that there's probably some overlap from the preceding Mustang Max, okay, on top of those leaves. So we're getting kind of cumulative exposure and we, as we do this. So it's depending upon how you rotate and tailor, you, you may get some good kick from the pyrethroid going on to say a, a spinosad intrust or success that may not have that residual by overlapping on a seven day. And I think a lot of you are doing this and we're really getting a pretty good uh, knock, maybe even a knockout blow this way versus the you know, traditional ways where we've had intervals between spraying because uh, we never had to deal with a, a pest that just directly hitting our fruit right through the ripening period. Many times we put on a weevil spray, then maybe four weeks later it was this and an aphid here. There's a lot of intervals, but now we've pretty much gone a blanket cover over our fields. And you can see that 
uh, pretty much reflected in, in those efficacy data there. The bars are fairly close together for both the um, uh, air blast and the mitigation. And then uh, the following week we came in again on our calendar spray and hit with Mustang Max again and we got uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good um, uh, sustainable mortality uh, through the seven day and even here we show 14 days and you know at 14 days that uh, Mustang Max is killing 90% of the flies at 14, 14 DAT in the corner and our mitigation, mitigated leaves uh, even though they're not as covered as, as maybe as uniformly, we're still, there's enough activity on those random leaves that are killing 50 plus or minus of the population. But like I said, through this experiment, uh, through this calendar uh, rotations, uh, never were any flies found either with salt solution or with uh, visual eye uh, evaluation. And I just want to show you Danitol. You can only use it twice in blueberries, but maybe we might want to use it early and as a cleanup. Uh, the red bars, uh, we, we can't mitigate it or chemigate it, but we put it on uh, at the uh, 16 fluid ounce rate. You can see the red bars out to 15 days. We've still got residues that are up to, uh, killing flies at 90% uh, or more. And we've got, I, I'm not showing it, but we, we can go, we've showed 28, 30 days where we still got residues that are toxic to this little fly, but certainly below tolerances for humans, human safety and consumption. So it's a material I think that maybe you, we might want to use early, maybe want to use in a cleanup spray in blueberries, and then use our other uh, two, uh, three or four IRAC materials in between, such as the OPs, the uh, uh, pyrethroids, and maybe even a neonic and a, and a uh, spinosad tank mixtures. And I think with that, at this point, we've got a pretty tight program uh, even though it's a, not an IPM program, it's pretty much a, a, a calendar spray program that I like to call insect resistance management. I think it sounds a little bit better than calendar, not quite IPM, but I think that we need to be cognizant of selection for resistance and I think I'm pretty much through. Um, finally, uh, I, even though the mortality rates were less than uh, the air blast sprayer, again, we never picked up any contaminated or visually observed or salt solution uh, uh, ex extraction of any maggots in any of the berries, okay? And again, I just want to push that uh, we're talking about, thinking about our programs as a sort of a cumulative exposure to sublethal residue layers, okay? That's happening and we're building that as we go through this, this particular program that we unfortunately have to go through until we can come up with new selective materials or maybe find areas that we can maybe break uh, this calendar spray. But at the moment, I don't think we're there and we need to stay with this program. Or once you get behind the, uh, the, uh, the uh, eight ball with the fly, it's really difficult to clean them up as many of you can attest to or hopefully none of you will uh, experience. And I think that's it. Well, with what? Uh, no. Well, in, in this particular, uh, the misters are yeah, are about seven feet above, uh, yeah, about seven feet high, and uh, no, uh, uh, the air blast, uh, no problems. But uh, I hadn't heard anything, uh, not too much. Uh, I haven't heard of any from uh, uh, Pan American berry guards. Yeah. Helicopter spraying. Yeah, we did. Uh, didn't have. Did, uh, we we got in late. Uh, most of the helicopter sprays, as many of you do, come in early, it's, uh, early. And by the time we we were doing this in July, August, uh, um, that particular uh, grower wasn't using uh, helicopters. So we did have one piece of data there, but uh, actually, I didn't. I didn't point it out, but we got, we actually got three to five days that with Mustang Max, uh, pretty good efficacy with helicopter at that time. Okay, we're going to have to cut the questions off here because we are out of time. 